Yay Media Group. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Spill the Beans podcast. Happy end of the week. And I'm just so excited, guys. We have a podcast that you guys have been asking for so much. And we finally have her here, our friend, Kaylee. Hello, guys. Hello. Um, so Kaylee has been our friend for years. She's actually married to Jonathan's best friend since preschool, preschool which is so <laughs> sweet. And we've been friends for years as well. So um she do you want to give them like a little background of what you do and yeah um so i work at a credit union i've worked there for seven years um i also have a bachelor's degree in finance and then recently i got my certification to be a credit union financial counselor oh my gosh that's who i am <laughs> honestly but anything finance we go to kaylee like kaylee yeah can you help us with this or what do we do here? And I think she's the main reason why we ever got credit cards. Credit think? cards, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you want to go in a little bit about yours, honey? About what? Like how you got credit cards? Because before that, we were all, like, honestly, like growing up, you're like, don't get credit cards. Everything yeah. cash. Like yeah. never, ever get like any credit cards. You know how they ask you like at yes. Kohl's and Ulta and yes. Sephora. So it's like, obviously, there's some that you shouldn't get, but it is kind of smart wouldn't you say yes and i feel like exactly that i relate to that like my parents were always i grew up in this household where um we would talk about finance and we would talk about money and i knew my parents financial situation and um like i would i learned early on how to like balance a checkbook and stuff like that i would see my mom do it but even though my mom was such a good budgeter and, and i knew my parents finances and i knew about money um my parents still were always like do not get credit cards they are bad. Like my parents got in credit card debt at one point. So they were like, no, no, no. So even, even though I had a good example of finances, I still had to go and learn about credit myself and credit cards and how they work and how they help people and stuff like that. Yeah. And you would say you were the same too. Yeah. I was going to ask you, well, you kind of answered it, but like, I feel like in the, in una pareja, there's always like the one that's more responsible than the other. So kind of like, were you always like this or did you, would you say you kind of got it from one parent more than the other? Um, I feel like both of my parents were really good at, um, like, their finances and stuff like that. Like, I always remember my mom always telling me, like, yo siempre tengo dinero guardado y tu papá no sabe, like, <laughs> stuff like that, you know? And, um, like, and she's like, y luego, like, an emergency happens, and I'm like, oh, no, Jesus, I have this money, stuff like that. So, like, that was always something I remember lear- learning early on. Like, you have to have your savings. Like, you have mm-hmm. to have an emergency can happen at any time, and you have to save. Um, and... I always liked the idea of money in the sense of like, okay, why can some people go to McDonald's every day and some people can't? Mm -hmm. Like there's something happened here. What what happened, you know, and how did that happen? And how do we get to why some people can't afford things and some people can? So I always was intrigued by this concept of money and like how it works, how it can help you, how it can hurt you because it can as well. Um, but yeah, there's always, I feel, so I feel like I'm always, and in my character, like I'm a rule follower. So like, I, I'm very conservative with money. I I don't like to take risks on anything. And like kind of what you're referring to, like in a couple, Marco is very risk taker. (laughs) Like he does not care sometimes. And like, so I feel like the balance is good, but yeah, like I feel like if it was up to Marco alone, which sometimes we need the risk, like, but sometimes he also needs to like, okay, chill out a little. So who would you say is the risk taker in this? Yeah. Oh my god, I don't know. I think we're pretty even now. I think so. Before, it's because you're more of the risk taker day to day, right? And when when I say risk, I mean home goods. <laughs> but like, <laughs> but I would say I'm I'm a risk taker every six months. But my things are huge, right? Like yeah. I'll be like, babe, I just saw this truck, this old school truck on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> if we buy it right now and in five years, I guarantee you it will go up in value. But that truck is like, I'm you like, know, bro, a lot yeah. of money. Not need so then, truck. like, um, so yeah, I would say like that. So I don't know. Yeah, I feel like we Pick have a good battles. balance in that sense. But I don't know. I feel like I've been pretty good with money all. No, you always have, yeah. Yeah, I think I grew up in a obviously low income household, so yeah. I knew my mom has always been a great saver. She, like. It's so funny because my dad obviously was the breadwinner, but yeah. my mom always had money. Like yes. no matter what, my mom had money. See, si, these Mexican papa, moms papa, were she had money. She's <laughs> yes. like, oh, like he. I was like, yes. how is she doing this? Yes. You know. So I feel like she really instilled in me like, you have to be kind of smart with your money. And yeah. when I first started making money, 
I feel like it was a little harder because I just wanted to help. And I was like, oh, here's for my mom, for my dad, you know? Yeah. But now I feel like ever since I got married with Jonathan, like we've been really open about our finances. And yes. like even when we, I think was it before we got married where mm-hmm. it was like, oh, like we sat down and we're like, okay, how much debt are you in and how much debt am I in, yes. you know? And we were both like not really that much in debt, which was good. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like f- there's something about women that always have money. Yes. Sabe dónde lo sacan, you know? yes. but or just like como cuidando, I feel like. Yeah. I don't know if it's like a womanly instinct, but like I'm always like in case of an emergency, like I need to be ready, stuff like that. Yeah. Or like I need to be able to have a plan B or something like that. And like I've noticed more with men, they're just like, eh, whatever, this is what I need right now. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So what is that what made you want to go to school for finance? Yeah, I think so. So like I said, I've always had this like concept of like money and, and I was intrigued by it, stuff like that. Um, and then I just, I, I knew I wanted to work with money and stuff and or math. Like I loved numbers. I loved the fact that one plus one equals two. Like there's no yeah. way around that. That's the facts. That's what it is. So um, then I was like, you know what? This is like the perfect career opportunity where I could work with math, work with money and help people. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, that's kind of important as well. <laughs> so I feel like all those three things just kind of put me in the place that I'm at, that I'm at today. Wow. Yeah, that does make sense. Yeah, I feel like we've always been so amazed by you because we go and ask you something, you're like, oh, well, this and this and this, but you know the facts behind it, you know? So yeah. I, I remember when I was going to open my Southwest credit card. Yes, yes. And I was so nervous. I was like, Kaylee, like, just let me know because, I mean, you know that we travel and everything. Yeah. You're like, you literally have to because yes. they were giving you, like, what was it? It like, was like some, like, <laughs> it was a, at a point where Jalissa was going to LA so often. Yeah. Um, her and Jonathan were always going. And then I think it was like, you, if you opened a new credit card, you got a companion pass for like a year. I'm yeah. like, Jalissa, you need to <laughs> do like this. Like, this. You're going to save money, get points, get free flights, yeah. get on the priority list, like things like that. So. Yeah. So I feel like you were the first person that made us not be scared of having credit cards. Yeah. You know, I was yeah. like, oh no, you need credit cards. Cause I only had one. And it was for two hundred and fifty dollars. Yes, <laughs> and yeah. I had that for like years, and that's what built my credit score. Yes. And I would only use it for gas. And I remember you didn't have any, right? No, not no. one. I would. My mom, like, she had credit cards, but she would always tell me not to get them. Yes, I mean, like, but every time we go to Kohl's, you always use your credit <laughs> card. You know, I, like as a little kid or yeah. Macy's or stuff. But she's like, no, the credit cards are the devil because you know, like, I don't know. You just hear about all this debt, and I was like. How much debt could you get at freaking Macy's, you know? Like, yeah. why, what's going on here? So mm-hmm. then, and then you grow up and then you're like, okay. You know, it's like the debit card in the Latino community is like taught, like, is your best friend. Like, that's the money you have. Yes. So why are you going to borrow money from the bank or stuff like that? And I was like, okay, that makes sense, you know? But then your parents tell you something about credit and that's like, what the heck is credit? I'll just buy cash, you know? Yes. No, cuida el crédito, cuida lo. I'm like, I don't even know what that means. Like, you know, but. Yeah. So I'm glad that you're here now because I feel like, especially like I said, in the Latino community, there's a lot of, what what would you call it, babe? Like, There's a lot of fear around Mm -hmm. money and credit cards and credit. And honestly, like living here in the States, you cannot move without credit. Like it's credit. It doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank account. If your credit is bad, you know, like people, like that's kind of your reputation, you know, in a sense. And it affects everything. Like it'll affect the, if you are in debt, but you have good credit, there's ways to get out of that debt at a cheaper cost. Um, your loans, you're going to be paying higher interest. Like all the, everything revolves around credit as much as I hate to say it. Um, but it's important to take care of your credit, to make sure that you have the best credit that you can have to essentially make your life cheaper and have better solutions for your problems. Yeah. And this also, you guys know, this is kind of like a relationship podcast. And what's like fascinating as well is that like finances tie a lot into like kind of what we always talk from a week to week, which is like relationships, because I heard that the number one, I don't know if it's divorce, but the number one reason a wife and a husband fight in the household is because of finances. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, if you get this straight, like Blank and I, I can say, gracias a Dios, we've never fought about money. It's, it'll be like little dumb things, right? Like laundry and stuff like that. So it's like, <laughs> right. but I was like, I can't imagine being in a position where you have to, you know, bicker, fight, not because of the lack of it, but because one can't manage it right or the other one wants to do this or, or there's just no knowledge behind it. So yeah, I'm yeah. glad we can get to the bottom of this. Yeah, I'm so glad Kaylee's here, especially because you, have you seen those TikToks going around? It's like, if I would have known this economy, I would have not gone to preschool and started saving for a house yes, by then, you yes. know? And it's like, no, like there's ways around it, but you have to be super smart about it, yes, you know? Yes, and it's true because even me, who I was intrigued by money and, and 
I liked how money worked and stuff like that. I mean, it's so easy to say, hey, you need to save, you need to build your credit, you need to do this. But then you're 19 years old and all your friends are going out and you're like, hey, I want to go out too. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so easy to overspend and and build bad habits. So I think that's the important thing. It's just like if we could teach people from like 18, hey, you're going to have a credit card, but this is for, to build your credit, not to overspend, not to go on a shopping spree. Don't be scared of it, but use it correctly. Things like that, yeah. that would just make all the difference. Because um, even, like I said for myself, there was a, a time, 1920, where I was just spending, not saving, even though I knew I, I should have been spent saving. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't until I like, like my mom sat me down and she's like, Kaylee, like you need to start saving. Yeah. So. Have you seen the TikTok guy where he sits and gives like financial advice uh -huh. with like really down bad people? Uh -huh. and, oh, the, yeah. and it's and it's a girl. It's like, yeah, my mom gave me a credit card. And one time I just swiped and it said approved. So I just started swiping. I was like, this is the best thing ever. Yeah. And then like I call my mom and she's like, mom, like, where's this all this free money coming from? Yeah. I think it's a glitch with the bank or something, she said. Oh, and then no. she, her mom was like checked you're like I'll, I'll be right back and she's like we're forty thousand dollars in debt or something like that oh like my god yeah and i think that that is one thing that i never understood was how you can get into credit card debt yeah and then there's like oh how to transfer your balance and like all of that so i'm so so happy that you're finally here we are yes. honored to I'm have you on to the be podcast here. thank you guys for having me you guys are gonna see a little insight into one of our closest friends ever she's amazing and you're gonna get to see her brains because mm -hmm. you're i'm like i don't know how your brain the fact that you say that you love math i was like <laughs> i don't know what kind of, of speech here. you are <laughs> but yeah guys we actually asked you on instagram to ask us questions and we are gonna ask you some we had so many so many so i don't know if we don't get through all of them maybe we're gonna have to do a part <laughs> two but let's are you see. ready yes yay okay let's get started. here babe you can start Wait, so if you just go these are screenshots and the um, circled okay. ones are the ones that you can ask um, okay this one's good because i was in this position too i have credit card debt 5k and student loans 3.5k which should I prioritize paying first? So I feel like once somebody already has debt, and and this is something to remember. Okay, well, first, um, not all debt is bad. Like some people are perfectly fine with having debt. That's just the way it is. They're comfortable with this. Some people see those eight thousand and they're like, oh yeah, like I'll pay it off in two months. But some people are like, no, this is going to take me ten years. So that that already is a difference. But then when it comes to paying off debt, I feel like there's two main ways. The first thing that you have to think about is the interest rate on each loan. So more than likely, I'm going to assume your credit cards are going to be a higher interest rate, but I could be wrong. So if the credit card is a higher interest rate, I would suggest paying that off first for, so you're paying the least amount of interest. But then some people also just prefer to pay off the smallest loan first and just get that out of the way and then focus on the big one. So those are kind of the two main methods to paying off any kind of debt mm -hmm. focusing on interest rate and paying off the highest one first or paying off the smallest balance first okay. i'm gonna start taking notes because i've <laughs> like always actually. heard you pay the small one and then you go to big right so you don't overwhelm yourself yeah but then that interest rate is makes a lot of sense because if you just let it sit there and it has the highest interest rate you'll end up paying more money if you would than if you would have started with the smaller one exactly that makes sense that's you know? crazy. Say that you have a small debt, right, babe? They have yeah. pinto. They're like two hundred dollars. <laughs> okay. And you start off with that small one, but like in a month, the high interest one they got two hundred dollars. So you oh, really okay. didn't pay off anything. Yeah, you're just spending way more money exactly. than you should. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Gotta start taking some notes. Okay, this one says, How do I not overspend on credit cards? Oh yeah, I like what we're referring to. And it's hard. So I feel like it all starts with the habits that you build. Since you were little, like if you start getting an allowance or some sort of money when you're little and you kind of start seeing like, hey, I should buy this or hey, I should save this. So th those habits, you start building those since you're little, you know, but especially when you turn 18 and you get your first credit card. If you look at this credit card and you're like, OK, I'm only going to spend $90 a month, just put my gas, pay it off in full every month. You get used to that habit of whatever I used on this card, I'm paying it off in full and you're not using it as an extra source of income. Mm. And I feel like that's the main way people get into debt is they see this as an extra source of income mm. when in reality it's not, it's just stuff that you're going to have to be paying back in the end. So 
I mean, you could either get a credit card and just put your gas and pay it off in full every month, or you can get a credit card and go on a trip, go on a shopping spree, stuff like that, mm -hmm. and then end up spending money that you originally didn't have. Oh, so okay. I feel like that's the big thing. And I feel like it's just the, the habits, like you're never too young to talk about money. You're never too, like you could start talking about money since you're three years old. You know, you could go to the store and be like, okay, do you need this or should we save this? Stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I feel like that's something that, that I've learned a lot as well. Okay, I love that because I feel like that's how I started getting my credit up because I remember my friend was like, well, just come and apply for a credit card. Everyone gets approved for this. Yeah. And I remember having $250 and using like 150 for gas every month yeah. and then just paying it forward, yes. you know? And so I feel like the one of the best advice that I ever heard was on, on your credit card, spend what you already have yes. in your debit card, you yes, know? So yes. if you already have that money, then spend it because you're just going to have to pay it back yes. next month. And, you know? and if you were already planning on spending that money, you're, if you weren't planning on spending $100, but you're just doing it to build your credit, like that's not helping you either. So. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about how they increase your limit without oh, even asking yeah. you? Yeah. Because, oh my God, <laughs> when I see that like increase, I'm like, you do, your brain does go to like, oh my God. Like, I don't know if it comes from like evolution, but like... <laughs> You want to spend it. Yeah. Like, you see money, you're like, how can I spend this? Or, like, Who do I need? that <laughs> freaking grill I've been wanting, like, that, that, you know, there it is. But it's like, oh, you have to hold yourself back and, like, yeah, that's and not I, your money. How? Something, oh, yeah, oh, go, sorry, ahead. go ahead. Just, like, something else that I've noticed, and it's kind of growing, I think, is especially with, like, influencers and stuff like that. Like, as people, we see these influencers go on trips and, and spend all this money which is fine, but then it almost influences people to live this lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So it's, and it's okay to say, this is not the lifestyle I can afford right now and being okay with what you can spend, you know, mm -hmm. and saying like budgeting and, and saying, Hey, I'm only, I'm only making enough income for me to spend $500 a month and really sticking to that and, and being okay with that. That's not bad, but as long as you know your budget and you know what you can spend a month, that's really important. Okay. And how, how do you like, maybe you sign something or but how are banks allowed to do that like increase your, your yeah what is your credit all, like your credit limit yeah that one it's like signed in your disclosure and stuff oh. like that when you apply for it like there's all this <laughs> these tiny disclosures and stuff like that oh so it's all included in there and then really they just go based off of your credit score so as they see your credit score increase increasing um and then your age stuff like that so they're assuming okay um when Jalissa first applied for a credit card she was 19 she at this point you you filled out an application you were a student you weren't working let's mm -hmm. just say and then okay now you're 26 um they have your credit has now at 800 we'll say mm -hmm. and um they're like, okay, and she has a job, stuff like that. So they're putting all this together and they're like, oh no, she qualifies for this oh, now. So. Okay. I like, just got an email saying, uh, please update, because we moved. And it's like, yeah. please update your address so we can approve your credit increase. And I was like, I ain't giving you <laughs> shit. Like, I don't want to <laughs> increase nothing. And you can, when, when if that happens to you, you can go to the original creditor and be like, hey, I don't want this. Can you revert it back oh. to the old one? And they can do, they'll do that for you. They have to okay. do it for you. So It's my TJ Maxx one, the one that... I'm like, all right, girl, don't, don't and give they me do any it right more. Right before the holidays. Right huh? before the holidays. I'm like, no, chill out, And then out, they get please. you with like the points back. You're like, I'm actually saving money. I'm actually I getting $10 coupons. Back. Yeah, like, yeah. are you kidding me? And that's the one thing that I, I wanted to say is for t for me, like the TJ Maxx credit card. Yeah. I was always like, no, like, don't get it. But now I'm like, dude, you go there every week. Yeah. And if you're going to, if you already have this money to spend, might as well start building your credit, yes. you know? Yes. And then I'm like getting 20 to $50 coupons back. I'm like, this yes. is basically free, you know? And, and like back to the same thing, but like, I wouldn't recommend that unless you've built the habits mm -hmm. of learning that you are going to use this card with the money you already had. Yes. You're not going to get this card because you want to renovate your home, mm -hmm. but you originally didn't have the money for it in the mm -hmm. first place, you know? So I feel yeah. like that's like my, my... I will take that to the grave with me. Like, do not overspend on your credit cards because it's so easy. And I just see it every day. Um, and I'm, like, traumatized by it. But, I like, I love to help. But I I wish I could go to every 18-year-old and be like. Like, you wish that at 18 someone would just come, like, all right, tell me everything I need to know. You yes, know? yes, yes. Yeah. And, and really learn that at 18. Learn those habits at 18. So by the time you're 30, you're hopefully not in, in credit card debt that you can't handle. So would you say like with credit card usage, there's like a beginner 
and then a moderate and then advanced like i'm I'm saying like advanced when you already know your limits you already know that you're only spending the yeah. money that you have so if you start as a beginner like just make sure it's only for gas or yes, only for yes, these groceries yes, yes. Like for this bill yes. okay so that's exactly what i say so like when somebody comes in and they're 18 i'm like okay this is this card you have a thousand dollars on this card in order for it to help your credit you're going to want to spend 30% or less, ideally 10% or less. So no more than $300, ideally $100 on this card. Use it and pay it off in full every month. If you use it that exact way, in six months, you should have an established like a credit number. It might not be perfect because you're barely starting, but this is the if you keep doing this for two years, you're going to have perfect credit. If you pay it off in full every month, you'd never pay interest on this card because you're paying it off in full um these beginner cards you're going to look want to look for a card that doesn't have an annual free fee that um really at this point you're not looking for any kind of crazy crazy rewards um really just establishing the habits getting that first card in and then six months to a year later later getting that second card in okay so you'll want to have then two cards established for two years after those two years that you have these beginner credit cards that's when you then qualify for like higher um rewards at, um like your travel cards stuff like that okay. so you can't even get these travel cards or these um some of the like chase adventure x things like that without having established credit like okay. they won't even allow it so okay and uh, kind of piggybacking back off on you saying that you should pay it in full every month. Yeah. It, I know that there's like loopholes where it's like, well, if you pay 10 days in advance and then you pay the other half. Yeah. Do you, can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah. So every financial institution is different on this specific piece. Um, but there are ways for you to figure it out, like apps like Credit Karma or um, Experian, things like that. When you go into those apps, it'll have a reported date. So um, like I have one of my cards, the, it happens to be that the s statement date is the reporting date so that makes it easy for that card okay but then i have another card that the payment due date is the 19th the cycle close date is the 23rd and the report date is the last day of the month so that one is a little bit more complicated mm -hmm. but really essentially what it is is that the financial institution will only report to the credit bureaus one day a month okay um, that day is the day that it's important to know what your balance is on the card because that's the balance of reporting so on the card that my financial institution reports on the last day if on the 28th i have it maxed out on the last day of the month i bring that down to 10 percent, and on the second of the next month i max it out again essentially the credit report is only knowing my balance on the last day of the month oh, so that's okay. how it's kind of a game and you just have to learn how to play it oh. every every card is different every financial institution will um, report on a different day okay but so that's the reporting date the statement day will be the date that your statement closes, which then generates a balance that you have to pay in full for the next payment date. And then oh. the payment date is the day that you want to pay your balance in full to not pay interest. Whoa. Yeah. So the statement one is so you don't pay interest. The reporting is so you don't... They don't report it to... They, they don't decrease credit. your credit because you use too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So the statement date, your, your statement closes that date and then is due on your payment date. And then the reporting date is... Sometimes just a random day in the month. Mm. So basically, say you pay your credit card in full, you can't use that money until after it reports. Basically, so they they can, I mean, it, so you when you pay your credit card in full, mm -hmm. then you don't use it again until after they report it to the credit bureau. Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. You can because the the statement date, let's say in on one of my cards, the statement is from the 23rd of August to the 22nd of September. Whatever I spent in that month is due on October 19th. Okay. But in that time, my financial institution reported to the credit on August 31st and September 30th. So those are the two dates that it reported out. And then each statement um, will be due a month out. Okay. That makes sense. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> it's getting my wheels turning a little bit. So basically, yeah, because I've always had that fear, like you pay your credit card and you're like, oh, I don't want to use it right away. Oh, Even yeah. though say it's like a business one and I have to because I need to order either inventory or something. And it's yeah. like, oh, like I just I'm going to wait. I don't want to risk it because then you use more than 50 percent of your credit card and your cre credit goes down. Yeah. I'm like, man. And that's why it's recommended. Like we were talking the, like a beginner 
credit user, mm -hmm. it's just easier for you to not spend 10% on the card and not have to worry about cycle dates, statement dates, reporting dates, mm -hmm. any of that. Just use 10% mm -hmm. and you're going to be good regardless of what day it is. Okay. But then once you start becoming like an advanced credit user and you know those dates, that's when you can start doing the like, okay, maxing it out on this day, paying it off on this day, mm -hmm. maxing it back out on this day as long as it's paid off by this day, stuff like that. So that's, okay. once you start learning how it works, but really as long if you don't want to worry about all of that, just use 30% or less or 10% or less, and you won't have to worry about any of those dates. Okay. Let's get that out of the way for people. I, I feel like we haven't said it like clearly. Yeah. Use Say you have a $500 credit card. If you use more than, what would you say? Like, is it 10%? So 30% is ideal. 30%. 30. 30% um, 30 or less, but then like perfect, it would be 10%. So basically, guys, I know this sounds like a scam because <laughs> I said it myself. If you get a $500 credit card and if you use $450 and it reports that you use that, your credit will go down. Yes. At least for me and my yes. personal it experience. It will hurt your credit. And I'm like, the first time it happened, it dinged my credit so much. And I told Mike, I was like... Why? I didn't use more than 500 If Why do you give me $500 if I can't use $500? <laughs> and that's when we started talking. I started talking to Marco, and, uh, and he's like, yeah, man, you're not supposed to use more than 30 I was like, because they want you to be responsible or show that you show them that you're responsible. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm being responsible by not going over 500 you know? Like, <laughs> irresponsible is if you gave me a 500 and I spent 700 you know? Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, that's just how it works. So I was like, oh, my God. And so, yeah, guys, don't think you can... On top of getting a credit card, you can't use more than 30%, right? So yeah. for 500 I believe it's $150 that I try to stay under when I use it. So that's another little thing because I don't want you to, like, as soon as you finish listening to this podcast, you go open one, <laughs> Max drop it $499. Out. Max it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah. When did you feel it was right to have someone help with finances? I would say... Even right now, I, I'm like, oh, like, am I, like, should I do this? Or, like, do I know enough to, to help people? Um, but as soon as I, like, before I, I had even graduated college, I feel like my first, I would say, guinea pig was Marco. You know, like, I, at this point, I was, hadn't graduated. I wasn't certified. I wasn't anything. But I still knew enough where I was like, no, this, this isn't right. Like, something needs to be done. We need to do something about your finances, about your spending habits, something like that. So I feel like even just as long as you have the right intention with helping somebody, like that's already a start. As long as you're genuinely trying to help somebody, like that's already a first step. Um, I would say then I got my bachelor's degree in finance. And at that point, I felt like I understood the concept of money and like how it's growing, how to invest, um, like inflation, how that's bringing it down, like the value of the money. Like I feel like that's what the bachelor did bachelor degree did for me is like just really emphasize the value of money and then I would say with the most recent um certified financial counselor that I got um that's when I I at least felt like I was certified to talk about this like mm -hmm. did I necessarily learn anything more going through the training and the um like counseling program and stuff like that not necessarily I would say like I had already been doing this at work every day but I feel like that at least gave me the confidence to know like yes you know what you're talking about this is what people are getting taught to go through this program you already knew this information so I feel like just having that title next to your name gives you that confidence to say like yes I can help you I'm willing to help you I want to help you I have your intentions in, in the back of my mind yes. so. oh I love that and uh, like um on the other side of that when do you think or when would you advise for someone to get financial help definitely so Money is a very personal topic. Um, everybody's financial situation is different. Um, like I mentioned earlier, $8,000 in debt is nothing to one person where $8,000 to another is so much money. So it's just such a personal topic. Um, and I would reach out as soon as you feel like you're overstimulated or overwhelmed by this. Um, because I promise what in your head might be the end of the world to somebody who has seen so many scenarios. It's like, no you're you're not in a bad position this is not bad at all you're only this much percent in debt stuff like that we can help you get out of here okay and i feel like it's just you don't know sometimes um i would like as soon as you get a loan and the first time you feel like you can't make a payment 
like reach out to the financial institution. The financial institution doesn't want you to make a late payment as much as you don't want to. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't make a payment, they're going to lose their money. Like they don't want that either. Um, With car loans, as soon as you feel like you can't make a payment, reach out to the financial institutions. Most of the time, um, like there's something written in those small letters there um, where it says like during the life of the loan, we can actually defer three payments but they don't tell you that since the beginning Mm -hmm. because they don't want you to do that. But then you reach out to them and you're like, Hey, I can't make a payment this month. I lost my job. This they're like, you know what? You actually have three payments. Do you want to use one of them? Wow. So little things like that. So reach out to the financial institution. Um, Another thing would be, um, I can only speak about credit unions. That's where I've worked. I've Mm -hmm. never worked at a bank or anything like that. Um, But credit unions are really like, in my experience, um, focused on the members and, and have the members best intention at mind. Um, with our credit union specifically, we work with a credit counseling company that the credit union will actually pay for the, for those services for you. Okay. So if we see that you're in a bad financial place, we'll say, hey, this is a credit counseling company. You can go to them. This company will pay for these services for you. Wow. So um, like I said, the financial institu- institutions don't want you to be in a bad financial position either. Mm-hmm. It only makes their job worse also, you know? Mm-hmm. So reach out for help to financial institutions. They can direct you to the right person. Oh, uh, something else that we didn't touch on was another thing that I feel like a lot of people can get carried away with yeah. when paying your loans. It's like the grace period. You know, yeah. they're like, you have a 10 day grace yes, period yes. and then you have these people paying on the 10th day. Yes. Uh, how, what, how does that work and does that ever affect your credit score at all? Um, not necessarily. So it doesn't affect your credit score because you're still within the grace period mm-hmm. and it's not um, reporting to your credit bureau usually it will only report to the credit bureaus if it's 30 days or more late okay um and then like i said by this time or at least in my case like we're calling you after the 10th day and we're like hey what's going on do you need help do you, something going mm-hmm. on in your life work what, what can we do to help you at this time um but that 10 day grace period for car loans and personal loans Really, the only difference is that you're paying the interest either sooner, a little bit sooner or a little bit later. But okay. it's not necessarily bad. Okay. Um, but in credit cards, what you start dealing with with the grace period is that even though you have a grace period for your payment, your st- interest still starts occurring. Oh. So the grace period is not for interest. It's only for making your payment, but you are still paying that. interest. Okay. So that's an important thing to remember. Oh. There's like a lot of things that you just don't think go into it. You know, you're yeah. like, oh, whatever, I have 10 days. Yes. And they're yes. like, well, actually, you're still accumulating the grace. Yes. <laughs> yes. And and you're paying that interest just sooner or later. Yeah. Would you okay. say that besides the financial, financial institutions where you get the loan from? Mm-hmm. Like I saw one time I went to the credit union, some guy, he was saying that like, oh, and if you ever have any questions, because I was asking a lot about like CDs mm-hmm. and funds, he's like, we literally have a guy here that we pay 50 bucks an hour to answer all these questions. Like, yes. never be shy to do that. Yes. Like, and come in. Do you say that's pretty much kind of like every bank? Like, do you suggest people like, hey, I'm moving out with my boyfriend to apartment. We both have jobs. Like, it's never too late or early to like just start asking questions. Do like pretty much every bank that you know of or a credit union kind of have someone like that you can just go talk to? Yeah, I would say that they have somebody. Um, It definitely, and like I said, I can only talk about my experiences with this, but I can assume maybe larger banks um, wouldn't talk to somebody if they don't have a certain amount of money or if they don't meet certain qualifications. Um, But like once again, little credit unions, they'll have this person there and you can go and and I would say it's never too early to get started to just get questions answered to know um, that way at least... Even if they tell you, oh, you're too early, you have to come back in five years, at least you know that yeah. you're doing something right. Where mm-hmm. if you go and you're 35 and they're like, oh, you actually should have started when you were 20. Yeah. You know, so I'd rather, pref- I'd prefer you to go in and them tell you it's too early than for them to tell you it's too late. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But That's- yeah, so just referring back to the same thing, financial institutions, um, they have a lot of resources and a l- they want to help you. So. Uh, this one says, should you make the minimum payment or pay the entire balance? Uh, so with a credit card, it's kind of like we were talking about earlier. You want to pay your entire balance in full every month so you're not paying any interest. Mm-hmm. And once again, that habit of just you're only using something you can afford. Mm-hmm. If you're only making the minimum payment, it's probably because you can't afford to pay mm-hmm. the entire balance. So then you overspent on your credit card. So I would say get in the habit of just paying your 
full entire balance every month mm. to not only save you money, but then so you're not, once your credit limit gets increased, you're not overspending. Mm. You're still only spending the same amount that you would have before the credit. Nice. Budgeting, saving money, and changing your mindset of not always wanting to spend money. Yeah. So maybe this is someone that's more like scared, I guess. Yeah. Um, something that I really recommend with budgeting is that's that's kind of where it starts. So for budgeting, something that's really helpful is to look like at your most recent statement, your past two most recent statements, and go through your transactions and highlight them, add up the numbers, things like that, and really see what you're spending your money on. Like you'll you'll be surprised if you're not tracking what you're spending on, if you're not focused on it. Like, okay, once you're looking at your statement, you're like, oh, well, $400 in Starbucks. Like, you know, these things add up, $5, yeah. $5, $5, where if you're not mindful about what you're doing with your money, it's easy to just spend it and spend it and spend it. Um, but I feel like that's the first thing. Just look at your previous spending history and decide if that's an okay number for you. Like, okay, maybe you are okay with spending $400 on Starbucks a month, or maybe you're like, I can't be doing this if, if, if I'm spending $400 on Starbucks every month, I'm eventually going to be putting on a credit card if I get in that habit, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to look at your statements and then from there decide, okay, this is how much income I got. This is how much of it I spent at different places. What needs to be tweaked? Where do I need to spend a little bit less on? Where do I need to spend a little bit more on? Um, from this, how much money was left over? Can I be saving that every month and things like that? So I think it's the best place to start is looking at your existing habits and mm -hmm. seeing what needs to change and once you have your budget down and your spending habits on track then you can start spending on credit cards okay and for that like budgeting do you have mm -hmm. like a formula you go based off like say you get your paycheck right and then yeah. you're like well 10 percent is going here and then the 20 percent is going into savings do you have that every month or yeah so there are um specific like recommended um percentages for everything um, I feel like I personally don't have that percentage just in our, I feel like how I already kind of just know like, okay, this money goes here, this money goes here. I, I don't necessarily focus on the percentages, but when I was first starting, yes, like it's just easy when you don't know what you're looking for, mm -hmm. it's helpful to have these percentages. Like if your income is a thousand dollars and you're spending 60% of it on housing, you're not at that point, you don't necessarily know that that's kind of high for your income. So at this point you can either get an, a new, another job to live at the same place but make that percentage a little lower or look for a different apartment to make that your housing fit more within your income okay. stuff like that and then um yeah if you're spending 25 percent of your income on food like you then you just at first you have to know what you're spending on and then decide if that's okay with you or if you need to adjust a couple things okay yeah, stop eating so much. <laughs> For real. No, but I wanted to touch base on budgeting because it's so important because back when I worked like my nine to five job and, and the trash company and it's like you would hear we would all huddle right as like co-workers before we started our shift or during lunch and you hear about like the guy that's like traveling with his girlfriend and doing all this fun stuff and then you have the same exact guy that has the same girlfriend, like not same girlfriend, but like just a girlfriend, no kids, like the same similar situation, but he's always complaining that he's broke and that yeah. he needs to work more overtime and that he needs to do this. And it's like, it's just because one family, you know, household budgets better than the other one, you know? And yes. it's like, it's so freaking important because I, I knew about the older guys that would have five kids yet they would never complain about money or they would always be the first ones to like buy everyone else food. And then you have the kid that lives by himself, makes the same hourly, but can't afford anything, you know, mm -hmm. just because obviously maybe he wasn't brought up budgeting or saving or doing all this correctly. And I feel like that's one thing that I kind of noticed and it was just very random. Like right before me and Marco, I would say like a year before, before we bought the house and moved in, we were essentially making the same amount of money as we were a year later. Right. Mm -hmm. But at that time, right then and there, it wasn't our priority to save. We were kind of doing our own thing. And I feel like maybe it's the, not that it's a bad thing, but at that point we didn't really have responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So we were kind of just spending. And then the next year came and we're like, no, we need to start saving. We need to buy a house, things like that. So our whole lifestyle kind of changed. And then next thing you know, we were paying our mortgage, paying our bills and stuff like that. And we we're like, what were we doing with all this money before? <laughs> like, not that it was a bunch of money, but mm -hmm. like, what what were we spending on and yeah. so i think it, it does you you have to know how much money you're making and what you're spending it on mm -hmm. 
Like regardless of if you're making a lot or a little bit, yes. you still have to budget it, right? Yes, yes. Is there anywhere I can check my credit score without hurting it and for free? Yes. So um, like we kind of talked about earlier, there are a couple apps, uh, Credit Karma, Experian, um, that you can go register, make an account with them. It'll show you, it won't show you necessarily credit score. It'll show you an estimated credit score. Um, this will vary a little bit when you go to financial institutions, but essentially you get the, the idea. If, if the app says 740, you're not going to go to somewhere and they're going to tell you 580. Like mm -hmm. essentially you're right around there. So those apps are good to have to check to make sure that um, whatever's reporting on there is actually yours. So if it says three credit cards, but you only have one, something's going on here. Mm -hmm. So it's good to check that, make sure you are keeping up to date with that um, and being responsible about it. You know, if, if something shows up on your collections on that app, you're like, wait, this isn't mine. So mm -hmm. be able to dispute it. Um, there's also a website called freeannualcreditreport.com, I believe. And you can do that one as well. Um, if you don't want to enroll with any of the apps and that one you just go enter your personal information and then it'll show you your three credit reports from the three credit bureaus the only thing with that one is it does not show you your credit score but that's okay, okay. it'll show you everything like all the accounts you have open your payments your payment history the balances um, and you'll want to do that at least once a year i would say just to make sure that everything that's reporting on your credit report is in fact yours mm -hmm. I just want to be in a room with whoever invented credit and all this stuff, all the <laughs> white guys, and just fight them. Because why does it hurt my credit to check it? Yeah. Like, why? Why would you make that a thing? Like, you go and try to buy a car, and they're like, well, we're going to pull your credit. You already know it's going down, you know, 60 points or whatever. Yeah. Or like, oh, credit karma. Yeah, it's giving you an estimate. You want to do the hard pull, then it's going to affect it. And I'm like, do you, what's the reason behind that? Do you think it's so people... I just don't see the negative in someone wanting to check it. Let's say they were addicted to it every day. Yeah. What, I think what happens? What it comes down to is when you're doing a hard inquiry, essentially you should only be doing that when you're applying for a loan. Mm -hmm. So if you're applying for a loan twice a month, three times a month, okay. that's reporting negatively on your credit because what what's going on? Something financially is not okay here. If you're needing three loans in a month, if you're needing... Um, if you're, you know, like mm -hmm. yeah. trying to do that. So I, I think it shows that maybe uh, like a warning, like, hey, something's going on. They're ordering their credit 15 times. And it kind of sucks because sometimes we'll have, I'll, I'll see somebody come into my office and they're coming to get a brand new car. And I order their credit report and it has like 30, no, like 15 hard inquiries within the last two weeks. And I'm like, hey, oh what were you God. doing these past two Damn. weeks? And they're like, oh, I just went to one dealership. And um, I applied for a loan, but sometimes dealerships will do that. They'll like yeah. send your application everywhere. And then each of these um, financial institutions that they sent their application to does a hard inquiry on them um, without, and they probably did tell them, they probably signed something, mm -hmm. you know, but they weren't necessarily told like, hey, we're going to do this. So it's just also lack of knowledge. It kind of sucks sometimes. That, but then, I mean, we'll, we'll work with them. We're like, hey, they didn't know this was happening they haven't gotten any loans so we can there's ways to get around it but yeah don't don't apply for multiple loans oh, damn. that's <laughs> a short crazy. amount of time mm -hmm. this one says is a consolid consolidated loan good especially if your credit card debt is very high with multiple credit cards yeah so there are many tools to help somebody get out of credit card debt um one option is the consolidated loan so you can either um just do like a personal loan where a personal loan is just you going to the financial institution and saying hey I, I need this money and there's nothing really guaranteeing the loan it's just kind of based off on your promise to pay that kind of loan is usually a little bit more expensive than a car loan or something like that because there's nothing guaranteeing the loan but this tool is really helpful when somebody has multiple credit cards with all around the same interest rate um and they're having to make minimum payments on all of these cards. Let's say you have a minimum payment of $150 on the card times five, that now adds up where all of this minimum payment is essentially going to interest. So if you consolidate it, make it all into a personal loan, now you can apply the $1,000 still to that personal loan, but only 250 is going to interest and the rest is going to principal. Mm -hmm. So that's one option. And I, I recommend that one if you have a lot of credit cards and they're all really high interest rates. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's no way to get out of the interest rate part of it. Another thing you could do is a balance transfer. And another reason why I recommend to get help as soon as you are struggling, because if you 
try to get help when your credit score is still good. You get, like we talked about, better um, interest rates, stuff like that. You can transfer your balance to another credit card with a 0% interest for a year or something like that, um, where in that year, you should be working really hard to pay down as much as you can to bring down that balance. So that's the second option. And then a third option that we recommend sometimes is a cash out auto loan, where that's if you have like a title to a car, Mm -hmm. you can go to the bank and say, hey, I have this car. It's worth this much. Can I get a loan on it? And the interest rate on that is cheaper than a personal loan because now you have the title. Um, But let's say your car is worth $10,000. You now have a $10,000 car loan and you paid off all your credit cards with them. So that's nice. Well, I did not know any of this. Yeah. And, And like interest rates, like right now they're kind of high, but four years ago when interest rates were really low, car loans were 2.99%. You could get a debt consolidation consolidation loan for 2.99%. Damn. And now all this credit card debt that we were paying 20% on is now at 2.99%. Dang. That's how the rich keep getting richer, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. You just, yeah, it's like I, you want to blame, not that you want to blame, but it's like, kind of like the race thing it's like it's just we don't know yeah. like you know mexicans like cuando vamos a estar first of all they don't teach it in school and then second of all like when where else are we gonna pick like it we up, don't you know? seek it either yes your yeah. parents don't say you like we'll go and see if you can get a credit card or go get some financial advice and i feel like it's that in our community it's kind of embarrassing to ask for help yes you know and that's yes. what that's what holds us back so much yes and i feel like genuinely like my favorite kind of people to help are that 18 year old who is barely getting started and i'm like just here this is what you need to know to be successful and if you do this i promise it'll work out or um, i work a lot with hispanics as well and they just love to learn and i love like their once because i I can feel that sometimes they're embarrassed or shy or stuff like that but once they get over that i'm like no like i want to help you sit down and let's talk about this and they're just so like intrigued and passionate and like ready to learn and like i like that sparks me I'm like yes yes oh, like i love that you're made to help people <laughs> and if there's any high schoolers watching this and you want to be a cop one day you have to have good credit actually <laughs> and that's something that i was like oh when he said that i was like yep i can't be a cop <laughs> no it's not that i had bad credit i just never knew of credit so yeah. i was like i don't even i'm not even gonna get into that but i asked the person that I, was like remember when i went the lieutenant yeah. it's like ah uh, like i was i asked him is this a myth like is it is like it's kind of true we don't expect you to have the best credit score in the world but it's like so you don't fall too much into temptation mm-hmm. with crime yeah because say there's like a I'm, I'm painting a weird scenario but like say there's a mafia boss right that he's like i'll give you two hundred thousand dollars if you keep your mouth shut someone with bad credit maybe is in some debts <laughs> you know is more susceptible to saying okay like you know throw them under the rug then to someone if you have good credit that's kind of a good res- representation of someone that has their life together what yeah. you're saying you know yes. so and and same um to work at a financial institution they'll order your credit report background check things like that and there's a, a lot of jobs that do it so yeah it's important to have that good that's credit. crazy i never even like i feel like i had good credit because of my friend that told me yeah. to go get good credit right that's to a good m- friend great credit but i remember John, like jonathan's like i have he's like Oh, I don't. I don't remember what you told me. You applied for once, but they're like, no, you can't. Like, you you have baby credit. There's yeah. nothing we could do with that. Yeah. And I was like, wait, what do you mean? And it's like, I did. I didn't even know what I was doing. I was just paying this card off, you know. Yes. But then he didn't even know what credit was. Period. You know. So yeah. it's like it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Is a snowball effect good, or what would you, or what way would be the best to bring our credit card debt down? So, um. Again, every situation is different, but the snowball effect is what we were talking about earlier, where you pay off this card with the smallest balance first, Mm -hmm. and then um, work your way towards the higher balance ones. And that is a really effective method for some people. Um, And the only reason I could think of you wouldn't do that is if the interest rate on the baby cards is so low. Mm -hmm. So if the interest rate on the cards that have $100 balances, if you have 0% on those for some reason, I would not recommend you pay those off first. I would recommend you pay off the one with a 20% off interest okay. rate. But if they all have the same interest rate, then yes, start with the lower ones, start tackling those first because it just seems more achievable. Mm-hmm. So if you tell me you have to pay off a card with 10,000 or you have to pay off a card with $200, I'll say I'll start with the $200 mm-hmm. one. So that also is like a ego booster. Like you paid off the $200 and then you're like, I did it. I, yeah, it I feels feel good. It feels I did good. something good. Yeah. So that that is a good 
a pro about the snowball effect mm -hmm. that it it does it's that like um i don't know what it's called but like that good feeling um you it's get like that. a reward yes yes <laughs> yes like you feel good when you do that so it's you get more of those feelings with the snowball effect because you're paying off more cards um, at a faster pace where it takes you longer to pay off the $10,000 one. So you don't get any reward while you're paying off the... What about those cards that don't have interest rate? Like, um, what I, I guess just off of our experiences, like our Best Buy mm -hmm. credit card, yeah. you buy something and then you have those 12 months yes. without an interest rate to pay yes. it within those months. Mm -hmm. Those aren't scams. Like that's just what people offer sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of stores do that a lot, but then financial institutions do it a lot as well. So... Um, when me and Marco got the house at this point, we didn't have any furniture. We didn't have anything. So we knew that we were going to be spending money. And that's when we decided to get the first like actual rewards card mm -hmm. when we were like, okay, we have our credit established. We just bought this house. Now we have to furnish it. And the financial institutions one normally are like, okay, when you get it 0% interest for a year. And then if you spend so much on in this amount of time, you get these bonus points. So I feel like that just worked out perfectly for us that I was like, okay, we have to buy a dining table. We have to buy a couch. Um, let's put on this card. We, we already had the money to buy the furniture. So it just made sense in that case. But um, another thing to use that 0% interest rate for is um, when you're in credit card debt, getting a new credit card and doing that balance transfer oh, right, for the 0%. Right. So mm -hmm. if you have a credit card that you're at 20% at, and then you apply for a new one, get it, transfer the balance, and now you have a year at 0%. So take advantage of those good ones out yeah. there <laughs> no if, if you have the opportunity to do that and you need to do it um you're purchasing something already you're already purchasing a fridge you're already doing that mm -hmm. i would take advantage of the zero percent interest rates okay. yeah i listened to a guy on the podcast and he's a little bit more extreme and he says if you use your debit card you are a dumbass and i was like oh shit like i need to listen <laughs> Sorry. Up. and then i was like you know i was like what's he talking about and he's like because if you have you know if you have a credit card that gives you points which then those points can be used to buy flights or hotels or cars. It's like, and you already have the money. Like if you are already going to buy that refrigerator, if you're already going to buy groceries, just do it with your credit card and have the strength to just pay the credit card off with the money you're going to use. And you just get these free points. Yeah. And I'm like, that makes so much sense. And it's just stuff that like, when I say the rich keep getting rich, it's because they keep getting all this stuff for free because they were going to just, just because they're using a different pl piece of plastic than you are, yeah. mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And it's I feel like something that I think about is there's two ends to a credit card, right? Like we're right now talking about this end of the credit card where you're getting these trips for free, these flights for free, stuff like that. But you know, like at the end of the day, there's no such thing as a free meal. Somebody mm -hmm. is paying for that. And who is it? It's the people on the other end of the credit card who are paying their interest, paying interest on the card every month. Mm -hmm. And essentially they're the ones financing it. You know what I mean? Like the credit card company is not going to lose so there so, it's just kind of like a cycle yeah like, so you can choose crazy. to either be on the end where you're getting rewards or you're the one giving. paying for the rewards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh dang i this is something else that you taught us yeah. which was the high yield savings account oh yeah when you're like if you have a savings account you better have it in a high yield yes. right because oh, well this one says is it a high yield savings account worth it yeah so do you want to kind of explain that so yes a high yield savings account essentially what it is is a, an account a savings account where the financial institution will pay you a higher interest on this account for whatever requirement they put either you don't touch it for a certain amount of time or it's an online account they could have whatever requirement they'd like um, but they're paying you a higher interest on this account normally savings accounts the interest rate on them is less than one percent it's like close to nothing um, some people don't even know they have yeah because some people like um it could be 0 0.05 percent so you'll get like a penny a month and they just yeah. see this penny and they're like oh i don't know what i that. would see that on my account. i was like what is that like but you just don't pay the yeah, yeah you don't realize that it's in it's supposed to be interest paid mm -hmm. but um my thing is like okay yeah you'll have that little savings account um fund it for a little bit put a little bit of money in there once you get one thousand three thousand dollars in there um then anything above that really shouldn't be in that account anymore. Um, that baby savings account is kind of just for like actual emergencies, like your tire randomly popped and you need to go change it and you'll take it from there. But for your actual savings account, if you're saving it in your a regular savings account, essentially you're kind of losing money on that just due to inflation, things like that. 
Um, so you want to put it in a high yield savings account where the bank is now paying you three, four, five percent. And even though it's maybe twenty dollars a month, uh, forty dollars a month, five dollars a month, it's still better than nothing. Than a penny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, once you build up your baby savings account, like the first goal, I always tell everybody is a thousand dollars. That needs to be your first goal. You need to get a thousand dollars, and then I would say two times your monthly expenses, and then over that to higher high yield savings account. Okay, so basically what you're saying is like a high yield savings account is going to be your true savings account that you don't touch. Mm -hmm. Like it's just your savings. Yes, yes. And you're just putting money in it every yes. month. Yes, and that okay. that money should be invisible to you. You don't see it. You're not touching it. You're not thinking about it. It's in a completely maybe even separate bank. Um, it's it's a, a true savings account. And for that, like what do you categorize that as? Like when do you use that money? Or is it just basically for... I feel like that would be like a true emergency or you're actually saving up for something. So that okay. would be if you're looking to buy a home, like that's where that money is going to come from. Or um, uh, like deaths, there, deaths and family happen randomly. Nobody's expecting them and they are expensive. So bigger emergencies like that, I would okay. say. But for your day to day, month to month, you're going to want to stick to this baby savings account. Okay. We need to go open a couple more savings accounts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I told Blanca, I was like, I feel like I can never have enough savings accounts now. Like, I have, like, you have, like you said, you have the savings account, and then you have the other one that's, like, for real, real big yeah. emergencies. But I was like, I need one, babe, that, like, no matter if my arm gets chopped off, I'm not touching that money, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. I want even more, in a more extreme one, you know? Like, but I And guess. it's, like, you can't have multiple savings accounts. Like, um, you'll have, like, that baby one and then you could have one that's for vacation like you're saving up for this trip and you're going to put that money in there and then you're saving one that you're really not going to touch at all um but then you're saving one for a new couch or something like that you know mm -hmm. so okay. and so just going off of like credit cards what credit card would you say you recommend um i think it really depends on what you're looking for at that time okay so um if you're barely getting your credit started i would go to a financial institution and tell them, do you have any credit builder programs? Do you have, um, do you offer something to somebody who has no, uh, no credit experience? I've been with my job for six months, things like that. What are the requirements for this? Most financial institutions do have something and their requirements aren't usually very high, like six months at your job, six months at your same house and a thousand dollars minimum a month that you're making, you know? And then they'll have uh, programs where it's like, yeah, we can do a car loan because you don't have any credit for a 15,000, 10% uh, down or something like that. Which when something that comes up a lot, comes up a lot is um, I'll get like a 19 year old and they're like, it's cause I want this $45,000 car. And at this point we're only approving them for 15. And I'm like, we're not doing it to be mean. We're doing it because in reality, this is, the, the best thing for you right now, like it's not smart of you to go a 19 and go buy this $45,000 car when you can't afford it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's that's a big thing that sometimes if a bank doesn't approve you for something, it's at the end of the day, they're really helping you mm -hmm. because they're putting you in a place, they're not putting you in a place that would make the situation worse for you. Okay. Piggyback, piggy, what do you say? <laughs> piggy Piggybacking off of that yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> what travel credit card do you recommend oh, yeah. for points? Um, so with points and stuff like that, like that's a whole separate top, like monster on its own. There's this whole like point travel people that all they do is like hack, um, point systems and like how to transfer it out and stuff like that. And that's like this whole thing that can just blow your mind as well. But, um, something important to consider is, what kind of reward are you looking for? So are you looking for literally just cash back? So if you're looking for just cash back, you're not going to want to go get like the Venture X or something like that. You're going to look for a specific card that just gives you one and a half percent cash back on all your transactions. You don't have to do anything. You just swipe it. You're getting one and a half percent cash back. If you love to travel, then that's when I would recommend or those recommend the like Venture X, the Chase Sapphire um, preferred or the Reserve things like that. And then look into those um, point systems. Really, you you won't get the best deal if you redeem your points directly through, most, for the most part, um, like the Chase Travel Portal or the Capital One Travel Portal. Like you're gonna make 
get the best deal when you transfer the points to an airline or transfer the points out to a hotel line, stuff like that, and use the bonuses that you get when you do that. Mm. So cool. I feel like the first thing that blew my mind was when you told me that like your honeymoon was basically free or something. You're like, yeah. oh, I'm going to use all of my points to buy the tickets to Europe. Yeah. I was like, ha, can you tell me more, please? Yeah. <laughs> and that, that was mind blowing. Yes. That's what we did. So when we got those credit cards, when we bought the house, um, I got one, Marco got one. We bought the furniture. We did that. And then we did it with the intention that we were like, okay, we want to go to Europe. And at this point we were like in the middle of plan with in the middle or starting to plan our wedding. Mm-hmm. So we knew it was going to be a while. And we kind of just hung onto those points and kept using the card. And by the time we were ready to go to Europe, like we just had these points and we're like, okay, like it's time to do this. And then we just transferred them out to Air France, I think. And they had like a 50% bonus or something like that, or 25% bonus, I could be like. And then we bought the flights through Air France and then um, transferred them to hotels and did that. That is so freaking cool. Like when you when money starts working for you, that yeah. is when it's yeah. cool, you know? And then it, like... Like I said, Marco was a risk taker. Cause then we got back. He's like, okay, I'm going to go open a new credit card. I'm like, no, 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 no. You are not going to do that. Like, you have nothing to buy on this card. Yeah. He's like, I can find something to buy on the card. I'm like, I can find something to buy on the card too, yeah. but we don't need to. So. Yeah, I feel like you have to be really responsible yeah. when you're starting to m- open more credit cards. Yes. But I feel like that's nice because when you first start, it's like nice knowing, like, okay, I'm only spending $100 on gas and I'm going to pay it back and it's what I have. Yes. But it's like you start venturing out when you start making more money and you start, your credit is better and then you yes. start opening a loan here and then getting this credit card yes. here. Or you're like at Sephora and they're like, well, you will 20% off if yes. you <laughs> apply for this. And I'm always like, no, 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 please don't. Don't tempt yes. me. <laughs> like this whole financial thing, it's like a whole different language. Like so many loopholes and things you can do. Like I would always hear um, people be like, oh, he's a financial advisor. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, is that even a real job? Like back yeah. then I'd be like, what does he advise you to do? Not spend money? Like what, how is that? A-? And then one time I went to the doc, to the clinic in Boulder and my nurse, she's like, yeah, my husband is a financial advisor and she pulled up like in a really expensive car I was like yeah. oh you know he makes money but yeah. he just advises people like i don't get it like but it's like so many things that like transferring from one portal to another when you have points mm-hmm. i would just like like even that's something that i potentially messed up just recently when i like told you guys in the vlog that i got blanca's birthday mazatlan hotel all with points but I never did any transferring. I probably would have gotten even a better deal, you know? <laughs> so, like, even I'm still learning and, yeah. and doing all this stuff. So, that's crazy. But I feel like that was the first time we were like, oh, shit, like, this credit card thing really works. Yeah. It's free. <laughs> what credit card would you recommend for, like, uh, day-to-day? Like, groceries, stuff like that. I, I would say kind of s- back to the same thing. Really depends on your future goals. Okay. So, like, when we were using that Chase card, that new Chase card, we knew our goal at that point was to go to Europe. But before that, I was just using, like, a cashback card. So, on that card, it was, like, 1.5% cashback on everything, and I was just using that card. Um, so, i definitely say it depends on what stage you are in life and what your goal is. So, basically, you're saying if you're opening a credit card, you have to know what your goal is for yeah. that credit card. Yeah. Okay. You can just say it's time to open yeah you can't just say like i'm going to tj maxx every week so yeah yeah well. <laughs> that's the goal <laughs> that's the one that i even like i told you i had why well, i had it for i've had it for a long yeah. time right but i never used it because yeah. i was so terrified it started like at a 400 hundred dollar limit yeah and i remember talking to jonathan once and this was like obviously when we started making money and like we both um were self-employed i wouldn't go to Marshalls as much you know yeah. because i was scared of like just spending money and then as we got i feel like it, it was the first house we moved into over in firestone jonathan's like well why don't you use it babe like yeah. you go there anyways like i was going and spending the money anyways yeah. but i never took my card because i was so scared yes and he's like you already have the money like just just think of, of it that way like you're already gonna pay it so might as well be making some points back because yes. you like get 20 dollar coupons for every like 200 dollars you spend yeah so yeah i feel like after he told me that i started using my credit card and now i use it like that like i'm going to marshall's i'm already spending these 100 dollars that i know i have so might as well put on my credit card exactly. and pay it off in that, full, and that's know? the smart way to do it yeah but like it's still scary and then you get the freaking email it's like oh well your credit has been increased to a thousand dollars i'm like oh no don't tell Shopping me that time. <laughs> the 30 percent. but do you have any more no i was gonna say i'm obviously no financial advisor but if i if you're too scared to get a credit card i would suggest 
you practice with the Starbucks, the McDonald's, the Dutch Bros app. Because it kind of feels like a credit card, but like it's not anything to do with your credit because you kind of practice with like the whole points and like the money that's in there. It came from your bank account, so you still have to pay it. But then it's nice like like what Blanca said. Well, if I'm still going to go to TJ or whatever home goods every week might as well get some points and some reward out of it so it's like oh my you're gonna get starbucks every morning then download the app and then get points for that starbucks you know mm -hmm. so it's like it's a good way to practice and kind of get familiar with this stuff it's, it's still miles apart but and i think like back to that starbucks it's a really good just going back to the budgeting and the habits that we were talking about if your goal is i'm only going to spend Twenty dollars at Starbucks this week. Load your card with twenty dollars, mm -hmm. and, that's and it. once it's over, it's over. If you spent it all on Tuesday, then mm -hmm. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, no Starbucks, you know. Yeah. But if you learn how to, okay, I'm only going to go and I'm going to get a tall for three days, mm -hmm. and can make it last a little longer. So. Or on Tuesdays, it's like double stars. Yeah. Sometimes credit cards will have, like, get this upgrade for one and a half points back or something like. Yeah. So it's like a good way to kind of get your feet wet or. Kind of even if maybe you have like an 18 year old and you kind of want to start them to practice, but you don't want to give them a credit card because it can ruin your life with it. So like, you Just know, download the Starbucks, Starbucks app. <laughs> and ya ves que yeah. siempre me andas pidiendo Starbucks de mañana. Te voy a poner, you know, thirty dollars for the week. You see, se te acaba el Starbucks. You know, yeah, that's, exactly. a, that's a really good way. Yeah. I think that having that when we first got the Starbucks, which was it was like two years ago, barely. No, um, I, I was genuinely mad i was like i've been missing all these stars <laughs> for so long even though we were going to starbucks so often yeah. so it's like yeah that that's literally how you feel when you open a credit card yes. you're like i've been missing on all these rewards and like my credit being better just because i was so scared to get a credit card yes you know? yes I so I, yeah i guess like the main advice here is like if you're terrified of getting a credit card and you're terrified of finances and it's been like a hot topic between you and your spouse or just like you have trauma from your family go to a financial advisor, like yeah. go to your bank, go to your credit union, whatever you use and ask for help. Yes. Basically. Yes. Yeah. Don't be scared of it. It's not something bad. It's here to help. Money is a good tool. It can be very, very, a very, very positive thing in your life. Mm -hmm. As long as you learn how to use it, don't be scared of it. Talk to your kids about money, teach them how to use it, what to, when to save, when to spend. Um, and I feel like as long as you do that, then, this new generation will grow up not being scared of finances like yeah. we were <laughs> so literally yeah and it's and something i left out in the beginning it's like finances have to do a lot with relationships but also with like kaylee said with your kids and i feel like i feel like in order for us to progress as like mexicans as latinos like we have to set up our kids for success you know and something that like we would always because blanca growing up had like a lot of white friends or just followed a lot of white youtubers and it would be like and white tradition it's a custom that the dad pays for the wedding or something mm -hmm. like that and i'd be like how do the we, you just assume these dads are like crazy rich or like or that the dad gives for their first down payment and it's like oh those are white they're they're loaded but then you start listening to like the youtubers the podcast it's like no my dad doesn't just have it like that or doesn't just have all this money laying around it's that the second i was born they made an index fund, they made a, a trust fund or whatever, and let's say 50 bucks every month until I was 18 or 100 bucks, whatever you can do, it compounds over time, guys. So imagine every month putting into like when your daughter turns either 18 or 25 or whatever, you're going to have so much money that you're like, you're going to be so proud of yourself that you can put up your kid for like a much better chance at life, better success. You know, it's like how amazing would it be that like right now you started with your two year old and like when they turn 18, it's like, hey, like, by the way, I never told you this, but like you can get a house because I have your down payment. You're a responsible kid. I'm proud of you. Or if you don't want to go to college, but I know you've always wanted to open up your own nail salon. I've been saving up all this money for you. So kind of i wanted to paint that picture guys because it's like finances is something truly beautiful and it's not something to be scared of because imagine you were to set up your kid f with that kind of success early on in life with a good credit score a good savings and then he can do it for his son so now your grandkids are set up for life and you just change the whole dynamic and dynasty of your family with just one savings account or one yes. trust fund like does that make sense like it's it's crazy i feel like um I, it was always funny to hear it's like 
oh well that's daddy's money or mommy's money it's like yeah duh like yeah my, I'm, I'm proud that my parents want to do this yes, for me. Yes. so it's like that's what we want our kids to be you know? and like proud. i feel like as a parent that's your goal yeah. to like mm-hmm. help your kids and set them up mm-hmm. for success you can only do that if you learn how to do that yeah like by learning for yourself you're setting up future generations too so always keep that in mind and don't be afraid to ask for help and if you have a friend like we're so blessed that we have you you know because if it wasn't for you we probably would have never had those (laughs) those credit cards or that mazatlan hotel for free (laughs) but yeah but i think that wraps it up guys thank you so much kaylee for coming on once again i'm sure people are gonna not only love this podcast but they're gonna want you on again Again. (laughs) so we'll have different questions or different you know experiences maybe we can throw in some like i don't know scenarios from people maybe just so they can feel like heard or something Mm -hmm. because i feel like there's a lot of people out there that needed this podcast and because don't get me wrong i love all the cheese may the conspiracy (laughs) podcast but you need something that's going to be good for you once in a while guys so thank you so much kaylee for coming of course thank you guys for having me thank you for all your knowledge we're honored and also like you know how we always do those advice segments segments yeah Maybe one day we can have you email us your your whole like <laughs> um, debt list yes, and like yes. whatever you like need advice TikToks? on. Yeah, yeah, and we'll have Kaylee sit down and yeah, just go and through like, one we'll of play them. We'll the good know? cop, bad cop. <laughs> Kaylee would be the good cop, and I'll be the co- the guy that yells at you like on those TikToks. It's like you are ten thousand dollars in debt, but you just went to Starbucks. Like why? Yeah. Why are yeah. you doing that? You know? For real. But anyways, guys, thank you mu- so much for tuning in yet again. And we love you. We appreciate you. Hopefully you're having a good day at school and work. And we'll see you next week. Bye.